Hey everyone, today I'm going to be installing the Airsport Products Low Profile Door Handle. This handle replaces the stock Vans exterior door handle with a clean aerodynamic uh, kind of flush mount handle. It does stick out about a third the distance of the original handle, so it has a really nice clean look. Uh, this handle retains the stock uh, safety mechanisms that are integral to the, to the Vans design but it also includes a provision for a exterior door lock. Um, the locks are the only thing that aren't included with the kit, but those can be ordered from Aircraft Spruce. Um, you'll want to do that anyway so you can have them keyed to how you want them. Uh, they can be in installed in an existing door. Uh, they're also compatible with the plain around third latch kit. Uh, I'm For my install, I'm going to leave my door pin blocks and the third latch installed so a lot of people will smooth over these with fiberglass to kind of clean them up that's no problem you, you can do that the only hardware that you're going to have to have access to if you're installing this in an existing door are the two screws that hold the handle block mechanism in here you're going to have to uh, be able to take those screws out uh, because that block itself is going to be replaced so if you've painted over those, you might have to dig them out. If you haven't painted over, great, you're set to go. So the first thing we're going to do <coughs> is we're going to use this steel striker plate, and that's going to be a template for a lot of the holes that we need to drill in here to accommodate the new handle. So we're going to use this steel striker plate as a template for the holes that we need to drill in the door pocket. I've previously installed the stock Vans handle. So I already have a couple of screw holes uh, top and bottom as well as the hole for the handle itself. Um, but so what we do is we're going to index the plate off of that top and bottom hole. If this is a new install, you've never installed the stock Vans handle, you can just slide that plate in there, center it up, align it so that it's parallel with the bottom door, and then mark the holes you need to drill. Uh, since I have previously installed, I'm going to use these two holes to index up to here. However, I'm going to have to round off these front corners to fit uh, inside the pocket. You just want to make sure that this plate sits flush inside that pocket. And I just need to do a little bit of trimming to make that happen. Alright, so I have my plate trimmed just a little bit so that these corners match up nice. I'm going to pop this plate in here, index it with a couple of uh, AN 509 screws and now I'm going to number 30 drill these three smaller holes And next, I'm going to mark the big hole as well as the lock hole. And with the lock hole, I'm actually going to find the center point by basically connecting the corners here because this hole is going to have to be drilled out bigger than the hole in the template itself. And now we can cut the center hole out right to our mark. Um, when we're cutting it out we want to make sure it's just big enough to, to fit this inner ring and have it rotate smoothly but not have a big gap around it. And I'm going to make that hole with a stepper bit and some files and some sandpaper. Thank you. 
Okay, so we've got our big hole cut and the inner ring fits nice and smooth in there. No binding there. So next we're going to take these number 30 holes and we're going to drill those out to quarter inch and we're going to drill out the lock hole that we found the center point to to three quarters of an inch. Um, it will get a little close between the quarter inch holes and the three quarter inch lock hole. Um, so you just want to take your time and make sure you don't break the two holes open. If you do, it's not the end of the world, but you know, I like to kind of keep that clean there. Once you have all your holes drilled in, it's actually a good time to look inside in between the two halves of the door and see if you have any voids in the, in the epoxy that you use to bond the door halves together. Um, if you do, it's a perfect time to inject some additional epoxy in there. Make sure everything's nice and strong. The next thing we're going to do is once again enlarge the lock cylinder hole. Uh, the lock cylinder from Aircraft Spruce is actually going to be nested inside the fiberglass of the door. So to do that, we're going to slide the lock from the outside through the striker plate, um, index it with the pins again, and figure out how we need to cut our hole. But before we can do that, we need to make sure the lock fits in the striker plate. Um, in my situation, I do need to file just slightly on the sides here to make sure the lock fits inside there. Um, I believe the hole is a little bit undersized just so you can make it fit exactly your locks so there's no slack in there. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so I have the lock installed through the exterior door. It's going through the striker plate. I actually have the nut on the back there. And then I also have the striker plate indexed with the two exterior screws. Now I'm going to trace around the head of the lock cylinder so I can drill that out. Um, that way this lock is going to sit down inside the fiberglass of the door and give us a cleaner look on the outside. So I've got my lock hole drilled out to the final size. Now we're going to want to make sure that our outer uh, beauty ring here fits well into the quarter inch holes that we have drilled there. So we're going to see if that pops in place and if it doesn't we'll just do a little bit of adjustment with a, with a, fi a small file inside those holes to make sure that slides in and out, out nice, and, nice and easy. It looks, it looks like we're close but I'm going hit, to hit it with the file just a little bit here. So we've got all our holes made properly. Um, one final thing uh, in dealing with this fiberglass is the holes for your door racks. You want to make sure you have those opened up a bit. Um, this handle block will bring those racks just a little bit higher than they were with the stock um, handle. So make sure that that opening is flush with the inside uh, cavity of the door just so you don't bind that rack on the fiberglass at all. You want to make sure that you've got some clearance in there. Um, <clears throat> you've got pins and, and things like that. So you just want to make sure that you have plenty of room on these uh, rack holes. Next we have to modify the stock inner handle. Um, 
because the new handle sits flush and a lot lower than the stock exterior handle, we need to cut down both the inner uh, safety, safety mechanism pin and the outer door handle cylinder here. Um, again, since I've already built the stock handles, I'm gonna have to disassemble this all uh, and then cut it down to the specifications in the instructions. Okay, so I've got the handle fully disassembled. Now, I'm gonna take my trusty caliper, zero that out. I'm gonna put that to the specifications listed inside the instructions, and I will use this to make my mark for where I need to cut. Once I've got those marked, I'm gonna go cut them off with my Dremel, clean it up with the Scotch-Brite wheel, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have our handle, and inner pin cut down to the proper length. Um, next, in order to give the lock arm something to grab on, uh, the lock arm, when, when you lock the cylinder, it's actually gonna put a little arm over the, the door release pin here. Um, to give that a little better bite, uh, the kit provides a longer pin, um, but that also means you'll need to notch out this inner uh, plate here. Um, this is the, actually the pin for the safety interconnect. Um, when you push the button on the handle, it raises this pin and allows it to turn. Uh, we're locking the door by preventing that pin from lifting up. So uh, take the pin from the kit, you'll set it in here, you'll figure out how much bigger you need to make your slot, and then just work on that with a file. Uh, mine, I actually already had mine uh, set for a larger pin that came with my playing around third latch kit. So uh, mine also is set so that it's offset more one way than the other. So at the fully open position, this pin won't latch. It only latches when the door is closed. Um, so I'll just need to make sure that my longer side is facing forward so that lock arm can cover that up. So once all that's done, you can reassemble the handle um, as per the plans. Okay, so we have the handle reassembled after cutting down the, the pin and the actual handle cylinder itself. Um, we've got the larger safety pin installed. Um, the only thing I haven't done is I haven't put the pin, the stock pin back through the gear here. Um, because what we're going to do is we're gonna take the flush handle inner ring here, that's gonna sit on top of the gear, and we're gonna put a pin through the whole thing right here. Um, one thing you wanna make sure is 
When the door is closed, you're, on the inside the handle is going to be pointing forward and the handle on the outside is going to be pointed backward. The notch here is where the handle is going to be sticking out, so you want to make sure that notch is opposite your handle. And then we're going to hammer that pin through. All right, we got the pin in. We want to make sure that that's flush um, and not sticking out of that ring at all because that ring is going to be rotating inside your fiberglass door. You want to make sure that pin doesn't grab anything. So there you have it. That's the lock mechanism or the door mechanism there. Okay, next we're going to take our Delrin block and we need to countersink uh, these three holes here. These are the holes that are going to hold the outer uh, beauty ring on and they're held in place with these little uh, countersunk screws. Um, but since the racks are going to be so close to those, they're, they're sunk into the Delrin. So we just need to countersink those three holes. Make sure you countersink it on the side with the, the rack channels in it, not this back side. So. And then just check to make sure those screws sit flush down in the countersink. Good. And now we're going to install the Delrin block on our door handle. So what we have here is we have a, a groove cut into the Delrin that matches up with a groove in the outer ring and that's all held in place with an e-clip. Now, what I've found is there is a kind of a, a more rounded side of the e-clip and a sharper edge of the e-clip. Now that e-clip is going to be riding against the striker plate. So set it up and you want to make sure that the smoother side of the e-clip is going to be against this striker plate. Uh, you don't want the e-clip gouging into this plate at all. Um, you can actually take a, a deburring wheel and, and smooth that up and polish it up even a little better if you want. So we're going to do that and then we're going to install the e-clip onto the handle mechanism. Okay, so we've got our e-clip uh, nice and smooth, um, rounded those sharp edges a little bit. And we're going to, again, clip the Delrin block to the inner ring, again, with that, that smooth polished side out towards where the striker plate's going to be. So we'll pop that in. Like that. And then we're going to pop on the striker plate. And then we can slide the lock cylinder in. And get the nut on there, get that installed. And there you have your handle mechanism. Next we're going to install this in the door. Okay, so we've got the handle assembly built. Um, one difference from the way this is put together versus the van's stock setup is that we're going to have to insert the door racks um, from the sides instead of just setting them in and then putting the outer plate on. Um, that's because of the way the E-clip holds everything together. Because of that, we're going to have to remove the pop rivets that Van has, Vans has you put in there to prevent the, um, the racks from coming out of the uh, door block there. 
Um, you can re-rivet it when you put it all back together. However, if you have the playing around third latch kit, um, they're not really needed. You run out of travel when this uh, mid, uh, mid bar hits this. And on the other side, you'll run out of room when this piece of rack hits the fiberglass in there. So uh, if you install the third latch, it's pretty much impossible to overextend the racks with just movement of the handle. Um, if you don't have this third latch, then I'd recommend, you know, putting that popper of it back in when all is said and done. But for now, we're going to have to drill that out so we can put the handle in place, push these off to the side, put the handle in, and then figure out our timing as those go in. Um, also, with the third latch kit from playing around, I'm going to have to remove this pin right here um, just because I'm going to attach the uh, mid rod here to the playing around latch. I'm going to disconnect this pin and then I need to slide this rack inside just so everything's in the door and I still have a clear space to get this in. Then we'll kind of pull it all together, get it timed, and drop all the pins back in. So here we go. Okay, so we've got the pop rivets out of the uh, racks, and now everything is pushed into the doors. Again, that uh, the mid rod and the rack are disconnected in here. We'll have to reconnect that once everything's in the handle. But then we're going, so now everything's pushed off. We're going to pop the handle into the door and work on getting these racks installed into the gear to the point where everything's uh, timed right. We want to make sure the latch is working um, and the pins are coming out at the same time and that we have the maximum range um, that everything's traveling how we want it to. Okay, so I think I might have the timing pretty close here. Um, you'll notice that um, to start the racks in the door handle, I went past closed about uh, probably 100 degrees or so. You know, so handle was down about here, and I started the bottom rack. I brought the handle to maybe about 80. 75 80 degrees past closed so you know right about here and I started the top rack so the bottom rack is installed farther than the top rack so in the closed position um, I've got good extension on this pin I don't have this mid piece hooked up yet so we'll see how that works but I do know that the top rack is perfect because my full open that rack is I, I get 180 degrees and that rack the top rack is against uh, the fiberglass in there so I know I have the maximum possible extension on the top. And again, all these numbers are based off of having this third latch. So you'll just have to play around with it. Um, it, it goes pretty quick. It's not, it's not real tough. So now I'm going to hook up this mid, uh, the mid rod here and make sure I have the correct amount of travel on that bottom one.
and I can see I it's not quite right so now when I try to to latch the door that rod is hitting before uh, the, the the handles in the, the right position so I'm gonna have to undo that pull this rack forward even more which means having a little less angle on it I think and uh, just trying it it's you know just a bunch of back and forth and uh, you know give it a few tries you'll see where you're at so what I'm doing is after I pulled that pin I'm pulled that I disconnected that pin I'm just taking a little punch and I'm moving this inner rod up and out of the way I could go down and out of the way just so I can get this rack to fully extend inside the door So right there, I just jumped. I could feel it jump two more teeth. I'm gonna pull it back in, engage this one at the same time as I did last time. Make sure it goes all the way open just right. And then we'll try again here. Oh, so close, but. I do want to, I'm going to move it one more tooth just because it, it's just barely engaging. There's no wiggle room there. There was one tooth jump. Engage this same time as last time. Full open's correct. There we go. Full close, full open. I get good travel on the pins, and our timing is set. Now, if if you want to, if you need to, you can pop a put a pop rivet back in here, um, just to prevent it from going out. Like as you can see, though, I mean that's as far as I can open it. The racks are not falling out. That's as far as I can close it. Uh, the racks they're not going to fall out. The top rack does suck a little bit in, but for that to actually come out, the handle would have to go you know, all the way down to there, and this bottom rack is gonna prevent that from happening. So, also, now would be the time to pop some safety wire into this pin. It's gonna be a little tricky to get it in there, but you can kinda fish it down around, and then you're gonna wanna safety wire that pin, so as the door opens and closes, that, that pin isn't gonna fall out on you. Okay, so we've got our handle in, we've got the racks in, everything's timed. Now we need to start figuring out the exterior side of things. So first we're going to take our beauty ring and we're just going to kind of pop it in place here. Uh, we want to make sure everything fits nice and that it goes on there fairly easily. And right now what we're going to look for is we're going to look at the hole that's going to take the roll pin that holds the handle on. Um, we're looking to see if we have clearance to slide that roll pin in with the beauty ring on. In my case, I can see that the, the beauty ring is somewhat covering the hole, so I'm gonna have to install the handle first and then slide this ring on. That's no big deal. Um, it's just a, a little trickier, so we'll show you how that works. All right, now we're ready to install the handle on the outside of the door. Um, like I said before, uh, because of the thickness and the way things laid out, I'm gonna have to put the beauty ring on after the handle, um, so now, to install the handle, we're just basically set a roll pin down through there. It's going to sit through the handle and that holds it all together. To make sure everything smooths to, or slides together smoothly, I'm going to put this in a drill and just uh, hit it on the deburring wheel just to kind of make it nice and smooth. I'm also going to put just a slight chamfer in the edge there so the pin kind of self-centers itself in the hole when I get it started. So I'm going to do that and then we'll get things installed. Okay, so we've got our pin polished up and a slight chamfer put on the end. And now we're going to take our punch and hammer and get it started in the outer ring, or I'm sorry, the, the uh, inner ring here. And then we'll put the handle in place and then finish driving that home. And don't forget to put your uh, tension spring in there as well. So. 
we're going to stick that spring in there. That's what's going to make sure that handle sits flush. There we go. So, handle is installed and works great. Now it's just a matter of installing the beauty ring on top of the handle. And to do that, we can just pull the handle out. I'm going to bring it to about there. And we can slide the ring right over. And it's a little bit of a tight fit here. Probably have to play with the angle you have here. And there we have it. The outer ring is now installed. I can go from the inside and I'm gonna put those three countersunk screws and that'll hold everything in place. Okay, so the final step is going to be to install the lock arm onto the lock cylinder. Um, we're gonna to have to notch out just a little bit of this part of the lock arm here because as you can see, when that arm turns, it hits the body there. So we're just gonna take a little notch out just to give it some clearance so it can get over there. Um, we're also going to need to bend this down just a tad so it's got uh, you know, as, as little clearance as possible when it rolls over um, just to keep everything nice and tight. So I'm gonna pop off this little retainer clip here. I'm going to notch the arm. I'll probably just do that on my belt sander and then I'm going to stick it in a vise and give myself a little more bend, screw it in place, and we'll be done. With lock install, you're all done. So instead of having to push a button in and then turn the stock handle, you can just pull the lever out, rotate it, it's open. Rotate it back, you're done. If you can't get your hand behind there, you can also just push on the inner part here, grab it, turn, and from the inside, everything works great. You lock it. It's not going to open. So there you have it, the Aerosport Products Low Profile Door Handle.